Hey everybody, welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. I am super excited to be with you this evening. Um, we are kind of doing a little bit of a different thing. As you can see, I am by myself tonight. Um, don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'll buy my lonesome, but I may or may not have a special guest uh, coming in to help me out this evening. So I'm super excited about that. Um, it's been a crazy week. I don't know about you, I kind of just want to start my own little like let's just gab together for a second while we're waiting for a few people to get on. Um, but let me know in the comment section how your week's been. Um, it's just been a really crazy week. I have been um, up to my eyeballs in spreadsheets. I am um, working on some coding for different things for our website and it has been a lot. Um, you can ask the special, well there goes that surprise. Um, <laughs> you can ask my special guest later um, what I have been like the last couple of days here at the office. I have been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the server, my computer, their computers all over the place just trying to get those spreadsheets all lined up. And I love, I love Excel, don't get me wrong. I love it, I love Google Sheets, uh, but it just gets to be a lot. All the information starts to blend together. All the formulas start to blend together. Um, and if you've ever done that, I'm sure you can relate um, to me. So let me know how your week's going in the comment section uh, below. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to go through my notes. It's weird not having someone else here with me. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we get started tonight. So the subscription button is right down there at the bottom right hand corner. It's free to subscribe. Um, so make sure you click on that subscribe button and you can get notified whenever we post new videos or whenever we go live here at After Hours just by clicking on the little bell that shows up after you click on that subscribe button. So tonight, let's move over to the machine real quick and take a look at what we are going to get started with this evening. So I'll meet you back at the machine. And as you can see, we are looking at the Swirl sketchbook tonight. Um, this is one we haven't touched on yet. So this is the Designs with Lines Swirl sketchbook. And it's got um, a bunch of different designs on it. This is part one of the sketchbook. So this is Swirl 1, and then there's Swirl 2. So Swirl 1 has this aqua cover, and then Swirl 2 has more of like a bright neon coral color. It's actually really pretty. Um, so that's that. And then in here, just like the rest of the sketchbooks that we've been taking a look at the last few months, eons that we've been doing this, um, there's all sorts of different design ideas in here. We're going to look at a few of them this evening, five or six of them this evening. Um, nice little arrows showing you what to do, where starting ends are. But the swirl stencils are up front. We'll talk about that in a second. But the swirls themselves, they play a really big role in how you're doing your stitching. You could use this stencil for sashings. You could use it for borders. You can make blocks out of this swirl stencil. We'll show you about that later. And you can do little cute little cornerstones out of it because there's multiple sizes on the swirl stencil and there's two different ones. So I'm going to head back up to the front and we are going to take a look. And I think someone is up there with me. Right now, what is this? Who is this? Hey, cousin! Hi! Can we, uh, yeah, 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 we're doing it. <laughs> Hi! How are you? Sorry, I said everything up It's for fine. Us, I know you're ready to start drawing, I but I just had to, to... I had to introduce you. <laughs> um, so hey, as you know, this is Summer, or better, well known as Cousin. Cousin. Um, you have quite, you've made quite a name for yourself with Cousin. Oh, nice. yes. When I go out and I see people, the little bit that I do, but when I go out and see people, they're like, how's Cousin? I was like, no, it's fine. Oh, I'm, that's fine. I'm great. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but cousin is going to be joining me tonight. Yes, now I it's love it. been a minute since you've it been on the machine, been. so this is going to be fun. I'm very nervous. <laughs> no, so don't, be nervous been a long time. don't be nervous at all. Don't be nervous at all. So tonight, like I said, we're looking at the swirl sketchbook. But since I've got cousin here now, okay. let's go ahead and ask Diana's famous question. She oh, has yes. to have a question since Diana's not here. She is um, manning uh, other things right now in the office. So I have a question. I don't know if it's as like intellectual as hers would be, but what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I love that question. Yes. Let me think about it because I honestly... I know, I kind of threw her off guard. And while I you're thinking like... about it, <laughs> what are y'all doing this weekend? So let me know in the comments below, what are you up to this weekend? Um, I will be here at the office on Saturday working a little bit. And then I have to go home and take down my Christmas decorations. Yes, I am still that one. My trees are still up. Don't <laughs> judge me. Don't judge me. My trees are still up. And if it were up to me, they would stay there until next December. Because it's just, the house is so festive is. when the trees are in. Your and house like, is beautiful. When you t thank you. But when you take everything out, it's like, oh, 
Back okay, just back to normal. Nothing's there. As I was saying, I took my tree down <laughs> January 1st. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. The trees are still up, and the dog yells at me about it all Every the time. Day. Every day. Oh, Spike. Oh, Spike. So, so yes, what are you up to? Um, Saturday, I'm going to be working Saturday morning throughout the afternoon. Okay. And so, after that, I'm probably just going to go home and relax with my husband and chill with the dogs. There you go. Go give them a nice walk. Speaking real quick of dogs, we both have dog stories. <laughs> since cousin is here I'll start with mine um, um, as if you follow me on Facebook I'm sure you've seen my little um, schnauzer spike he is the cutest thing hi spike I know he's at home watching yes. um, but cutest thing hmm. um, he decided that he wanted to go peruse through the trash can in the dining room Ooh. today or dining room and where is it at in the kitchen <laughs> I should feel like I should know where my trash cans at <laughs> it's not in the dining room um, but he wanted to go per peruse through the trash can, and most of you dog owners, I'm sure you can you can agree with me on this, or re not agree, relate to really? me on this. Yeah. Um, so he perused the trash can, ended up all over the kitchen floor. He didn't eat any of it. He just wanted to be nosy. I don't know where he gets that from, but couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you where he gets it from. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was. J excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> but he decided that he wanted to do a little perusing through the trash can and make his way, making my way downtown. So he did, <laughs> down to the kitchen. Um, so that was what I got to go home to uh, today. So that was great. But cousin, tell your story about what your dog your did. I know my story is better than my story. Yeah, your story's a little different. Go ahead, so real quick. I have two mutts. They're medium sized dogs, I guess you should say. They're a good size. Yeah. They're cute, but they're good size. And so I live on the third story of my apartment. And I was taking them both for a walk at the same time because time management and I don't know how it happened a leash got caught on the doorknob doorknob or the door slammed me slammed against my head and so I was just like okay that's fine <laughs> we're great I'm great we're just gonna fine. pass that by <laughs> I didn't just get done doing my and hair, then as fine. I'm doing that one of my dogs I don't know what his problem is but he's wiggled out of that little harness that he has <laughs> and he went down the stairs and I tried to go after him and he pulled me down with his leash halfway on him and your girl went sliding down about two things of steps. Stairways. Yeah, just went yeah. down, about halfway down the stairs. And, and got ooh. about a bruise this big on my leg. Got it's the picture. purple. It's, it's like nasty. as purple as this expo. Yeah, we'll zoom into it, but it's about as purple as this expo. So, yes. But, he just go had to dogs. go potty so bad, so I guess he uh, just he, had a... So you can't really blame him, but I then know, you also like, like want to knock him out. Yeah. Okay, we well, have a good reason to bring you yeah. down. I mean, you didn't I do it in the apartment, but we could have just done do this a little that easier. Way. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We're, We're fine. Everything's fine. We're still here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at drawing board, and yes. let's see what we are up to today. So we have our famous um, sheet protector covering the um, these uh, what are these cousin these dotted lines of the stencil. There we go. We're gonna call the it that. Practice. The practice <laughs> sample. There you go. <laughs> um, so we pulled those out of the back of the book. Most of these sketchbooks, if you've been following along with us, have these um, little options here that you can work with. And so we have these in a sheet protector. Excellent. Oh, that's color, color her bruise right there. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, uh, cousin, I think you said you wanted to go first this evening? Yes, okay. I did. So you pick a color and find your page number and see what we're working with. I feel connected to this purple. I think okay. I'm going to work it out. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to work on this little swirl right here. And I am going to go to page 12 in the swirl number one book. And this is what it looks like. Cute. I thought that was really fun. You guys know I'm a beginner. Not that great at all this, but we're going like to try this. our best. This is cute. So it says that you need to start in the middle. So I'll make a little dot right there and put my S to start it. And then I know I need to go this way. So just to help myself out, I'm going to put these nice little arrows. And I know when I go back this way, I'm going to have to go that way. So put some more arrows just to help me out a little bit. Okay. And then from here, we're going to start and go around the stencil with the dotted lines. Go all the way down and stop right here. I'm going to go make a straight line down. And then I believe I'm going to come right back up and uh -huh. come around this way. Uh -huh. 
And Looking then, like a little ribbon there, the way yeah. you cross the lines, it looks like and a ribbon. And that's what I really liked about it. It kind of mm -hmm. gave it like a more 3D effect, mm -hmm. I guess you should say. Mm -hmm. And do the same thing down here. Mm -hmm. Go down mm -hmm. and follow it back out. Beautiful. Cool. Oh, is that middle? Yep. Yeah. Make it to the middle. Yep. And then we're going to do the little fans. Well, I don't know if that's what they are. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call them fans. They look like little. Fans. Looks like a windmill. Yeah, that's yeah. why I thought it's of a windmill. Fan. Yeah, I like that. Looks like a windmill. I like <laughs> and that. And there you go. I think that's super cute. And then I really like to start with the ribbon part first, mm -hmm. so that I know what my spacing is when I get I here to the middle. See. So I don't make this too crazy out here. Right, and, and then it I ends can't up make getting that. to that point. I so see. So I like to just start with the ribbon part and go from there in the middle. Yeah, because most of us think we're taking. We're doing this right here, and then we come in here to the center and do this. Start the middle. But then, then you come finish. out and you're like, oh, well, now this one's got to be this small. Yeah, and then it, the, 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 yeah, one, the continuity of it throws off. So exactly. I like what you did there. Okay, cool. Perfect. So I will let you head back to the machine. Ooh, lordy. And let's see what we can do back there for us. There we go. So we can just set all those aside. And I think you might need some stencils. Yes. You I might need some stencils. I might need some. Well, let me bring you some stencils back. You might thank need them. Thank you. Thank you. You might need them. So we were talking about earlier how the swirl stencil, and cousin, if you want to hold one, I'll hold the other. Yes. The swirl stencils have two different ones. So this one that we're, the one that I'm about to hold up is um, NA2132. And this has two different sizes on it. It has a five by one and a half. And then it has a cousin. Oh, it's my little note card is back here. I oh, believe. I was testing you. I know. I was ha I, we had a pop quiz there. <laughs> oh, I didn't study. Oh, you didn't study. You didn't tell oh, me there was a well, pop that's right. quiz. I, well, th that's the point of pop quizzes. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I haven't been to school. Uh, a long facts. Time. It's been a minute. So first <laughs> one was that five by one and a half. Yes. And then we've got to the next one. Seven by two inches. So I've got seven by two. Yes. So if you're wanting to do little small sashings or small, small borders, or if you're wanting to do certain blocks out of this, this would be the one that we'd probably recommend. And then this next one that I've got is NA1888, and these are much larger. They only much, fit in the camera space. Bigger. There we go. Um, so the next one up would be this size right here. And which one we got here, cousin? Ten by three. So we've got ten inches by three inches tall there. And then last but not least, we've got... 14 inches by 5 inches. So 14 by 5. So if you've got like about a 6 inch border, these one, this big one right here, this 5 inch one yeah. would be definitely good because you have plenty of margin to work off if you're doing feathers or stuff like that. So two different ones, cool to work with. Which one do you want to use? Are you using this let's one? Let's use the baby one. Baby one? All right. Yeah, let's there go ahead go. and do that one. All right. So, so you can just pick a spot, any spot. We'll do it right there. That works. Right here? Yeah. Perfect. So we'll flip, oh, yeah, it, over. flip it over. Label side label down. down. And she's gonna grab her pounce powder, give it a little baby tap. Pat, pat. Ooh. Hello there, baby. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna hold it down real oh, quick and just do a lightly thing. brush. Hopefully that mm. was light enough. Give yourself a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, give yourself a little bit more. Never hurts. There you go. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll pick up the stencil and see what we got. Look at that. Bam! Perfect. That looks nice. That looks good. Beautiful. So I'm gonna okay. put this over here real quick. Okay. And then I'm just going to get my handy dandy white chalk pencil and just put my little arrows out there again for me so I know what I'm doing. Okay. This is cute. I think I'm ready. Okay. Let's see. I have. Do you want me to start the machine yeah, for you? Yeah, I was going to okay. say, hold on. I've <laughs> been this machine in a long time. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be in stitch regulated mode um, today. And let me get you here to your starting point. Oh, thank you. Thank no you. problem, cousin. I got you. I appreciate the help. I got you, cousin. Oh, well, if I can grab the threads, <laughs> that'd be lovely. There we go. Grab a couple single stitches here. And then I'm going to do like the first like portion of your ribbon real quick so I can cut your threads for you. Yeah. Is that okay? Perfect. So I'm going to go, go right, ahead. right there and I'm done. Okay. Don't blame you. I'm going to go right there and I'm done. And then I'll cut these in as you were. Sorry. Perfect. What button do I have to press now? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so press that D right there. Okay. There you go. And I'll just keep going? Yep. I'm just pressing like that. There you go. Ooh. Okay. So we're going to come down. And then we're going to go up. Uh-huh. And then we're going to go back around. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that on the fabric with that thread. I mm. love it. It pops out so nicely. Love that thread color. Goes down. 
come back around. Ooh, she's cute. And then we'll do our little windmills. Uh-oh. We're losing you on the camera angle, but keep keep doing what you're doing. We'll adjust it. Oh, yeah. I see that now. Perfect. Let me pop this up real quick. Sorry, I had the camera in an awkward position so we couldn't see it. Um, so just like her drawing, went through and did that. And you want to do one more for them? Yeah, We'll do it up a little sure. higher so we can see higher. it. Yeah, we'll do it up a little higher. How about, we'll do it like in this area here. Perfect. So. I'm loving her. No, she's, she's cute. cute. She's cute. She's cute. We'll do this little larger one this time. Okay, perfect. So chalk that down. Ooh, Perfect. Yeah. Oof. A little bit of powder there. There you go. A little bit of powder there. A little bit of a brush. There we go. There you go. All right. And that should give you plenty of space for what you want to do for now. Okay. Perfect. So, let's start you here. And do that. You are so good at that. Oh, uh, years and years of practice, honestly. I believe it. There we go. One right. day I'll be as good as you. <laughs> yeah. Just practice. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I'm just going to follow that dotted stencil. Go down. Come back around. Cross through. Come back to the middle. Follow this side around. Stop. Cut down and go through. Come back around, meet it in the middle, and do my little windmills. Point, 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 and point, point, and point. Perfect. Beautiful. Love you it. See, I used your little point trick too. Yeah, point. To my you just gotta points. hesitate for a second. Point. I like the size difference too. Yeah, we did yes. this on purpose. Mm -hmm. Look at the Show size the difference. difference. Yeah, look at the difference there having those two. So you could imagine that, you know, in different portions of the quilt for sashing, or if you're doing that as a border all the way down, you could just oh, yeah. keep the swirl continuous. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it's definitely. I was even thinking about adding some fun colors in there if you had. You know, oh, different extra types of thread. Mm -hmm. and things like that. If you wanted to add more to it, you, you could, could definitely add. do that make it like a 3D kind of effect. I like that. Yeah. Cool, yeah. All righty. Um, so I'll pull up threads. If you want to head back up front. Yes. And get us all situated there. I love this. Great job. Thank you. Thank love you. This. I'm so proud of my first time back. You're doing great. Oh. So we're going to take ourselves back up to the drawing board, and I will be up there momentarily. And let me just get a few things done here. And we'll be there. We are all ready for you up here. For I'm sure. excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you have next. Oh, gosh. I don't even know what I have planned next. <laughs> Just kidding. I do. Getting a few things situated back here. Okay. Moving around here. All righty. So back at the drawing board here. I am going to do some feathers. Woohoo. Love, Love the some feathers. feathers. So I'm going to be doing, I'll do blue. That one's calling to me. And I'm going to be on page 23. So this is what I'm going to do. Except instead of doing it horizontally, I'm going to do it vertically. So just going to oh. show you working, maybe if you want to work down the quilt a little bit, if your block was enough that you could fit it in, the, um, in your quilting space, you could do that for sure. So I am going to find my starting place wherever I'd like to start. I'm going to say I'll start more or less meh, right about there. Call that my starting point. And I'm going to head up this swirl and use this as the first plume of my feather. So I'm going to head up this direction and come down to that starting point. Remember, I do those where they lock in together so you can get the real idea look of that feather. You could stop it a little early if you want to keep it that way. Some of us just like to lock that in and keep that, that feather looking continuous. So we're just going to keep going down the stem here. Down the stem. Working our way down this. Work this here. And I'm kind of going backwards of the way I'm normally thinking to do this. So I normally work the other way up the stem. But I decided I want to give it another shot to go this way. So we're working down. And now we're turning a little bit. 
I'm loving it so far. I like it. Yeah, this one. I'm, I'm doing it. It's a little different than the way the Designs with Line book has it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just kind of switching it up a little bit. And I'm going to flip this around. Always good to challenge yourself and see always, what you could do. Always. And then I get to make my way back up. Just like that. Down the I stem. practice those feathers when I'm bored to... It's fun. Well it's fun, honestly, just to nice draw easy. something in, yeah, and make, make it a little easier for yourself. And if you wanted to, using this, we, you know, how we went this way, you could open this feather up and do maybe another one here on this side if you wanted to, or build on oh, yeah. that if you wanted to, and work your way around here just to kind of lock that down. Um, just completely personal preference, just depending on how you want to take it. Um, but the biggest thing is getting that muscle memory in of how you're wanting to do this. So let's head back to the back. Alrighty, we're going back. And I'm going to do this one. And I think I'm going to do that uh, seven inch one. A little bit of a larger one right here. So we'll do this one. I'm going to do it right about, let's see where this is going to cut you off so we can still see what's going on here. Do it right up here. Up into my little stars and loops from earlier. There you that go. was from last oh, week. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go up a little bit into that and come down. Might block you a little bit when we get down here to the bottom, but you'll be getting most of that idea there. Um, so we have that set up just like so. So I'll just brush across this just like that. Thank you, thank you. Like I said, down on page 23. And I'm going to grab my chalk pencil. And depending on how I want to start this, could work whatever way we wanted to. I'll start right about here. So this is opposite of the way that I was drawing it out. Remember when I drew it, that was kind of basically flipped this way, so I had to kind of reverse my mindset of thinking here. So I'll head up this direction, follow that in, lock down that first plume there, and then these are just going to follow down the stem. Making sure I have nice curvature on those flowers there. Flowers, goodness, those feathers there. <laughs> the feathers. Flowers, feathers. I'm thinking about your windmill. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so working through this as I'm coming down. Thinking of a warmer time in Texas. Warmer time in Texas. Yeah, I'm still in a jacket. Um, so coming through here, taking this one around, flipping it and making my way like this. Just around this until I get here. And if you want to continue up this plume, you could until you maybe locked it off right there. Completely up to you, all personal preference. So we'll start here. Oh, I cannot wait to see this. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> you got this. So we will take our single stitches to lock that down. About three or four single stitches good, gives a good lock, unless you're wanting to tie and bury your threads. Um, then you would just kind of take off at that standpoint. But if you're wanting just to tie off just like we are, two or three or four will lock it down good. So we'll start this up. And I'm actually going to move into constant speed. We've had a lot of users reach out to us that say, hey, I don't have a stitch regulator. Can you show me kind of, you know, how you work without having one? Um, so I'm going to move into constant. So this is without a stitch regulator. And I'm on speed 30. When I'm doing small stuff like this, I like to be between 30 and 40. Um, 30 was a good start for me. So we'll go up from there depending on how we want to take it. Here we go. Oh my goodness, that is coming out gorgeous. Oh, camera's in my way, so it's hard to tell, but yeah. I speed myself up a little bit here. I must say, Mr. Corey, you have the muscle motion down because, or the muscle memory down because you are doing this with one hand right yeah, now. You're getting around this camera. <laughs> Let me stop this and move my threads out of the way here. You are doing amazing. Thank you. So, with being constant, you're your own stitch regulator. So you can see my stitches are a little wider than yours were. 
I like a wider stitch. Sometimes when I'm working with stuff like this, I just like the way it looks. Yeah, no, um, I was definitely about I think it's to ask cool. some questions because I was like, your stitch definitely looks a lot different than mine Completely does. different, yeah. You were stitching at about 13 stitches per inch over here. Okay. This one being in constant, I, I increased myself up to constant at 35 or 36, excuse me. Um, so we're probably between 9 and 10 stitches per inch. This is much larger. Yes. Um, so it just depends on what you, what you like. Um, but when you get that speed and you get that motion, you could end up making it look 13 stitches per inch with constant. Mm -hmm. The thing about constant that I like, so sometimes I actually do turn off my regulator, is because when you're getting into these points, sometimes you end up fighting the regulator. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, when you, you say your points, you're hesitating, so it feels yeah, like the machine's so kind of like, fighting. Mm -hmm. This one, that needle keeps going, so your points are always dead yeah, on. Yeah, I was about to say, it looked like it was kind of going so smoothly. You know? Correct. You're just kind of just moving with it. The only thing about it is, remember that when you stop moving, the machine does not stop. stop. <laughs> so you have to remember that. That's one thing um, that you have to get used to. But so it's, I like using constant. Um, if you have a freehand machine that has the manual option on it, I definitely recommend jumping into constant and trying it out, seeing what you think. Um, it's definitely a lot of fun. So, cousin, you're up. Perfect. What you got for us? So I am going to do like a little block, I guess you could say, of this one, this little design right here. So I am going to get on page 35. Okay. And what do you guys call these? Are they like little cutesy curls? Is that what you Curly Q. She, like, she calls them curly Qs. Yeah. yeah. So. And then the cute little petal on the inside. Right. So what, what she's doing here with this one is you're taking that swirl stencil Mm -hmm. and basically getting right there in the center and splitting it and it ends up making a block. Yeah. So you can, you're making a block out of this one stencil as well, which yeah. is awesome um, when you have different sizes of blocks on the quilts and having different sizes of this stencil, you can easily um, make that work for you, which is cool. So, um, sorry, I didn't mean to stop you. Oh, I just no, thought it was cool totally to bring that up. Oh, you're totally fine. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, there's just two swirls. They meet up right in the middle and that's all it is. Right. And it does look exactly like, like a little block. That's why I was like, oh, it kind of looks like a block. So I think that's what I'm working on. Right. All righty. So we are going to start off in the middle. So I'm putting my little dot and my S. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and make the curly cues first. And then once I do that, I think I'm going to go back in the middle and do the little petals okay. and whatnot. So I'm just going to follow the stencil all the way around. Make my little Q and come back and go to the next one. Do it again. Wow, I feel like I'm really getting the hang of it now. There you go, girl. Now my little petals. And bam. Here we go. She looks so cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I feel like if you even wanted to, you go around and make bigger ones if there's like extra space or yeah, definitely. whatnot and kind of just add more to it so it's not just so empty around here all the time. You could add some more there. Definitely add something. You could do an echo around it if you'd like. I was going like. to say, is it an echo? Is it's an echo, yeah. <laughs> you had it right. You yeah, good job. Yeah, you had it right. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, Perfect. so you want to head back to the back? Yes, okay. I'll go ahead and do that. So we'll head back to the machine again, and we have stitched out a just a block for you. This block is a little larger than what we're going to be able to show you on camera, just because of the way the machine hits us. Um, but you could take your <clears throat> your stencil that you've got, and like she said, we just have it basically making an X out of that stencil. I'm going to have you do the smaller one a little closer to the top. Yeah, Normally you would size it, of course, to fill the whole to block. Fill the whole thing, um, but yeah. just because the camera's weird, we'll do the smaller one up yeah, closer to the top. So grab that stencil and label, label down. side down. Yes. So proud. She's learning. She's learning. Get some pounds powder. You said right up in this corner over here. Perfect. And then I'm going to bring it back down and meet it the middles up. The little dot on the middle. And do that. Hold it down and give it a nice little wipe again. There you go. Oh, it looks so cute. Yes. 
Love it, I love it. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna bring the machine up towards a little starting point. Mm -hmm. I just press this button. Uh, we'll pull up your threads first. Oh. Sorry. No, I you're was good. Up there doing something. Um, so we'll pull up our threads first. Because the big thing is you want to have that bobbin thread up. Gotcha. So here's a, a good teaching moment. So you, yes. you pull your bobbin thread up all the time first because if you start going automatically, what the bobbin thread's doing on the bottom is you have to imagine all this is hanging underneath right now oh, off the machine. Gotcha. So when you hit going, you're going to basically tie up and have a bird's nest back there. It's not okay. going to prevent you from starting, but yeah. it's going to be a pain in the took us to <laughs> <laughs> to take out um, and pick out and you might end up ripping out stitches oh, so if bet. you pull that up first and keep that nice and taut when you're taking your single stitches uh -huh. that's going to keep it locked in so you see how I was like I'm slowly pulling it as I'm taking those stitches yeah. what that's doing is that's pulling up that, oh, bobbin, that thread bobbin thread and okay. keeping it from looping on the bottom when you get started oh. make sense okay yeah cool all right so I will do the first part of your little curl yeah, so I can right cut your threads so Okay. And I put you back in stitch regulated. Hopefully oh, that's thank okay. You. Yes, you're good. <laughs> and I'll trim these away for you. And you press the D to get started. There we go. You guys ready? Here we go. I'm ready. Start off with my curly cues. Go all the way around. Stop and go back. And go up this one. Sorry if it gets cut off a little bit. And go back around, and then we go up this one. Here we go around. Oh, she's thick. That's okay. Oh, yay! It's so cute. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Okay, now we're gonna do our little petals. There you go. Point back into the point middle. Point back into the middle. There you go. Come back out. Point. Yay! <gasps> that looks there so cute. I'm gonna go for a little baby one. In the Let's center of them. The center. Yeah, I like those. I feel like I have so much more control this time now. Mm -hmm. I love it. Look at that. Oh, she is so cute. That's cute. Let's pull that up and have everybody just see like that, it. so they can see it. I'm loving the gold on the black. I am looks too. Nice. It is really looks good. Looks nice. We're using a glide, we had someone ask, we're using a glide, uh, what is this cousin, Dijon? Dijon, Dijon yes. glide, so glide 40 Dijon. Um, love that, love, love, love that. So you can imagine if you have those small blocks, if you're working on oh, a quilt, yeah. maybe like a nine patch, maybe. Ooh. You could place one of those in each one of those patches or maybe even alternate them. One has these plumes in it, the next one is just, just the curly the cues, cues. The next, next one, one has just the plumes. So you can kind of alternate yeah. that around and have a different look. Beautiful, I love it. I think that's cute. Okay, um, so I'm actually going to pull something out of the book. We ha I saw in the comments, uh, or actually I'm not pulling something out of the book. I can't even speak. Um, I saw <laughs> okay. in the comments that someone said that they are working on a modern quilt this a week. modern quilt? <clears throat> so, you know what a modern quilt is? I don't. Okay. That's why I was like, ooh, so, what is this? <laughs> so, with modern quilting, you're normally looking at more straight lines, more geometric type things. So okay. you've got pearls, straight lines, nice crisp corners. Oh. With traditional quilting, you're looking more with feathers. Okay. So you've got more feathers. You see a lot more echoing in traditional I quilting. Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of trapunto work in traditional quilting. So like that quilt that we have on the wall with all the colors where it's like really thick oh, in certain spaces. Yes, so yeah, that would be like more like trapunto work. So okay. you see a lot of that in traditional quilting. Um, modern quilting, you're looking very minimal. Very minimalistic, a lot of negative space because gotcha. you want the quilting to really be like the catch all of it. Gotcha. You'll see some amazingly pieced modern quilts, some beautiful things. I was going to say, I feel like I've kind of seen, You've seen some. something. You've seen like some. That. Um, and it's a uh, quilting, it's, it's a nice blend, especially when you mesh the two together. Yes. Um, you can get some really cool patterns out of that. that you have some circles really and some exciting. pearls. Yeah, some really cool stuff. So, um, speaking of modern, I want to show you how we're going to look at doing um, so a modern string of pearls. Pearls. You see a lot of pearls. You see a lot of pearls in modern quilting. Um, so I'm going to take this swirl stencil here and I'm going to show you how we can perfect our pearls. Because okay. drawing circles, I don't know about you, 
uh, is a task. It's a, task. <laughs> it's, it, it's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> we all make choices, and that was a choice. That was a big choice. <laughs> so normally when we're drawing this, I'm filled with Expo dust, but normally <laughs> when we're drawing these circles, you know, we're looking something like that and something like that. You know, not too bad, but then it starts to, oh, 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 oh gosh. Oh, oh, there, she uh -oh goes. there she goes. <laughs> um, so not bad, but you, you want something a little easier for your mind no, to understand. Yeah. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a nice S string of pearls okay. and I'll start, we'll start down here that with this one. That sounds real pretty, an S an string, S string of, of pearls. pearls. Yes, trademarked. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so with this one, the cool thing about long arm pearls is if you start with having more of a flat line, which is something you wouldn't think to do, uh -huh. um, you can get, uh, you can achieve almost that perfect circle. Okay, so what I mean by that is we'll say that this is our starting point and we're starting way off the swirl right here. Okay. But we'll say this is our starting point. We're going in with more of that flat curve. Now you don't want like a flat line trying to put something on that. But okay, I was like, you want that? a little bit of flatness and then you're gonna come in with the circle. Look at that. Oh, See what I did there? Yes. So you're coming yes. in with a little bit of flatness up into a circle. Look at that. Oh yeah. That's up so into much. a circle, just like that. So having a little bit of that flat line curving it up and coming around. Okay, I see what, see what you I'm mean. doing there? No. So yeah. have that little bit of that flat, curve it up and come in out of it. Easy. See that? Yeah. Now you're getting those nice circles. And yeah, and they're all about the same size. And all about the same size because you're seeing that together. And you're not having to guesstimate like kind of where you're headed. This kind of gives mm -hmm. you a nice string there. So if you're wanting to do like pearls in the ditch or something like that, you do this oh, is kind of more fun. like your stitch in the ditch pearls and come into it. So different things like that. So on this S curve here, we could, let's say we'll start here, I'm gonna do this upside down. So I'm gonna follow that, curve it, circle. Following my stencil, curve that flat line, circle. Oh, and that stencil's gonna be so much help to do Oh, so that. much help there. Like flat curve line, because you're just following that line. Right, all the following way that powder, that chalk line that we have. All the way powder, I'm thinking of a Christmas cookie episode <laughs> where we did powdered sugar. <laughs> following that chalk. But just kind of having that straight line there to help you. Oh, and that makes it so much easier than going around and right instead of kind of working around and yeah, so many different <laughs> ways. There, you can kind of do this if you're trying to work through like a, a rope of different things. The the biggest thing is is to get your mindset over. You want to start getting it. You start getting that loop fashion because you get so uh -huh. excited about it. And Remember to slow down. Yes. You want to stay with that more of that flat line so you can achieve that nice circle, that nice pearl, mm -hmm. just like so. Wow. Just like that. Kind of hard with the reflection, but there we go. Just like that. So you can achieve those nice oh, little yeah, pearls. Oh, yeah, that is gorgeous. Just like that. So let's head back to the machine, and I'm going to do that real quick. For sure. So I can't wait to see that with the gold. It's I know, with the gold on the so black, fancy. it's going to look so cool. Yeah. Um, so I will grab my stencil, and I'll do it. I'll do mine kind of catty corner here, just like that'll work, so I'm not in the way of the... We'll just do it right here in this little space here. All right, so I'm coming in with my chalk. Now, if I wanted to do a nice uh, border of these S pearls, I could definitely get one of these nice larger stencils, fill that nice section up. If you want to do it like an infinity sign of pearls, oh. okay, you could take this, powder one side, flip it, powder the other. You have that nice infinity sign because then yes. it ends up more or less looking. Just put these little dots here. You know, I'm just gonna powder it out. We'll chalk it off. But if I took that, did that one, mm -hmm. and then came in with its opposite, using that little center circle to match them, match up, them up, you match with that center circle, powder, and that's a nice infinity one. sign. Mm -hmm. It's perfect infinity sign. Yes. And so if you wanted to do those nice infinity pearls, mm -hmm. you could do it just like that. Do that. You could do little feathers on the inside. <gasps> I saw some inspiration. So in those proud. Books. Thank you. So thank proud. You. So we're going to take this one. This will be our last design of the evening. We'll take this one. And I will take that across just like so. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to be in constant again because that's what I like. Yes, I love seeing you in constant. So we're going to stick here and apologize if the can or if the machine's in the way for just a hot second. Making sure we're pulling up our bobbin thread. Well, we're doing that because we had that little tip earlier. Yes. And... Then after that, we can start her up and we'll be working constant. And let me work away on the camera here. Oh, wow. 
Yes, that looks so much Ooh. easier. We're kind of having that flat line. Yes. <gasps> Just like that and pearls. Oh Done. Oh my goodness. Done. Easy. Done. That was like a hot 10 seconds. That was a hot 10 seconds. If that. Yeah. Easy. Easy, easy string of pearls. So you could easily throw that down. If you want to continue this across a border, you could just shift that stencil down. Yeah, have this for nice sure. string I of pearls. Say, I think you could just kind of keep going you could, all yeah. the way around. Keep working that. And up. then if you wanted to, go on the opposite side so it can kind of create like a little exactly. effect like that. You could have some Maybe like space a walkway. If you're thinking like a stone walkway, yeah, a stone you could do walkway. that. That'd be nice. That'd be yeah. Um, and just because I need to have something on the other side, we'll go back to do throw some feathers in because you said you had inspiration. Yeah. So. I always have inspiration for the feathers. So just going, make sure we take that nice back deep in. I know we got camera in the way, sorry. I'm going faster. And then I crossed over one, sorry about that y'all. Um, but you get the idea, you could easily make your own cool pattern, having feathers on one side and nice little pearls on the other side. Um, one thing that we haven't really touched on real quick, I know we said last design, but one thing we haven't really touched on was talking about how you get rid of the chalk on the fabric, um, which is a good thing to talk about. So when you have the white pounce powder, this is iron off or like spritz with water. Um, and the blue and the pink ones are spritzed with water only. Yes. Because ironing the blue or the pink will set it. Yes. And you don't, don't want to do that. Do that. Yeah. Um, but what I like to do is I just take a damp paper cloth. Don't be, don't drench it, but a damp paper cloth. And I'm just going to come over this fabric and I just rub back and forth white, uh, white paper cloth or white paper towel on this uh, black fabric. You definitely see all these pieces. Yeah. But I wipe back and forth. <laughs> With that damp cloth. But look how easily that and just just disappears. Gone. Right up. Gone. Just like that. And I'm doing this over the whole quilt real quick. I was going to say, we had extra dust left over. All and over the place. It just wiped it all over the place. Or all gone. It just wiped it all gone. All gone. Um, so just like that, it's gone. If you have some really tough ones, like if you, if you like dug in with your chalk pencil, I use a quilt sponge. So quilt it's called sponge. It's Aunt Pam's Quilt Sponge. Looks like that. That looks like fun. Yeah, it's like, it's like kind of like a Brillo pad but not because it doesn't have chemicals <laughs> in it. Like, but okay. <laughs> um, So it's kind of like that. But I can scrape across the fabric like this, and it's it's plastic, so it's not going to, like, harm the fabric. Oh, but yeah. it pulls up. It looks up. like it's even taking away all that little dust. All that dust. You see what I did there? You see what I did there? Oh, Had that paper like towel. See that paper towel picture. covered in stuff? And Look at that. That's gone. Oh, yeah. Stunning. Stunning. Probably probably a little hard for you all to see on camera. Um, but when I have this paper towel, it's covered with lint everywhere. Come in with the sponge, it pulls up all that it excess shock right and pulls like up all that. It looks like nothing was there. Ever. Looks like a computer did I that. Did Aren't that. we good? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just to kind of show you a few different things that you can do, thank y'all for staying on with us this evening. This was a little longer because, of course, we had story time and oh, yes, then we showed you how time. to take off the chalk. Um, so, just one of those things, real quick. But we did look at the swirl sketchbook. Uh oh, where are we at? There we go. Back here. Um, <laughs> we did look at the swirl sketchbook number one, number the one. aqua one today. Yes, because there is a number two. Because there's two, yeah. So, so you this is make sure you that get aqua, aqua one. one. Or you can get both, or the coral one. Or all or, the books. Or you can get all of them. Offers. Yeah, you can get all, <laughs> we of, love them. all of them. All those designs with lines. Um, so you can shop on our website, www.longarmsupplies.net. Yes. Um, and you can do some of these really cool designs that Cousin and I were doing today. And you could do them so much better than me. I already know it. <laughs> I'm a beginner. I know nothing. You're an embryo. I'm an embryo. You're an embryo. I am. So you're starting out. I'm growing. Starting out. You're growing. Um, but some cool ideas that you can use with these swirl stencils. Cousin, I will send you back Thank behind you. the camera. Thank you so much for of being course. with me. I love you so much. I Thank love you for you being too. with me. You did I a great job. Hey, everyone. Um, so bye. everyone, say bye to Cousin. Um, we will see her next time. Um, here at After Hours. So thank you all so much uh, for joining me. We have a lot of really cool things planned and lined up for you this month. So make sure you stay tuned to our YouTube channel. Um, we will be interviewing uh, Linda V. Taylor towards the end of this month um, on a bunch of different computerized designs that she has been working on, along with a little bit of a tribute um, to a past um, designer and uh, quilt maker expert. Some really cool things there. So take a look at that. Um, we've got some cool piecing ideas coming in, looking at the X-Blocks and Basic series. 
uh, which I know that y'all liked whenever we did that um, table runner and those placemats last time that we did that. So definitely uh, keep stay tuned, keep an eye out, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get updated, and I will see you next time here at After Hours. Bye.